Hello and good morning. This is Andrew Green, the spring wheat breeder here at NDSU. Um, I am sorry that we couldn't be together today in a field to talk about some of the things that are going on in the breeding program and some variety testing information from 2019, but I thought this might be an opportunity uh, while we're here on a virtual format to share some things with you that I normally wouldn't be able to share uh, were we standing in a field uh, looking at, at the plants. And so some of the data that we use to make the reports and the presentations that I like to give when I'm out talking to folks, um, we can share here in this format. Before we do that, uh, there are some just kind of general things that are exciting that we think are going on in the breeding program right now that projects that have sort of evolved recently and that are starting to gain some traction that I thought I'd discuss. So the first thing, if you've heard me talk at a field day presentation or a winter meeting, you know that um, finding new ways to select for end use quality for milling and baking quality is really important in the breeding program. And one of the ways that we've recently started to do that, uh, there are actually a few ways. Uh, we have some methods that we're testing that were uh, actually should be published soon uh, that we're starting to use in the breeding program that utilize some simple chemical methods uh, in conjunction with the folks at the quality lab. And we've developed some models that are able to take tests that require very small samples of grain that can be done in early stages of the breeding program on lots and lots of test samples that are able to predict some of the water absorption and mixing traits and the ability for formation of a good loaf of bread. Uh, these are expensive tests to do in later generations and they require a lot of seed. So for us to be able to predict these things in say a first year yield trial where we might be looking at over 5,000 entries would be a huge time saver and could potentially result in uh, some higher quality lines coming out of the program. So we're doing that with some sort of what I would call real chemical tests um, involving seed, small samples. And we're also doing that with molecular markers. And one of the things that we've been able to work on intensively over the last year uh, with the help of Dr. Sintai Udaba, who works in our program, is a whole genome marker predictions for a number of different traits. So this is not new technology. This is work that's been um, popular and prevalent in the private sector, particularly with your row crop companies uh, for quite some time. But what we can do is we can take uh, a whole set of molecular markers across the wheat genome. We start with 90,000 of these and we find uh, individual alleles or versions of these genes that are highly correlated with the traits that we're interested in in the program. And we're in the process right now of doing developing models to help select for these traits uh, with a number of different things with ranging from end use quality to uh, the rust diseases to fusarium head blight uh, pre-harvest sprouting. So these are traits that are difficult for us to get accurate phenotypic data for in the field and having these uh, abilities to predict them from molecular markers doesn't give us uh, a way out of doing that field screening, but what it does is it allows us to reduce the load of how many individuals we're screening and hopefully eliminate some of the poor individuals uh, before we go through those expensive field tests. So the next two bullet points, two of the things that really came out of the focus from last year's uh, unfortunate conditions in the field, uh, we've really had a resurgence in our pre-harvest sprout research. So this was screening that was traditionally done in our breeding program every year uh, for a number of years by Dr. Froberg. Um, and we sort of took a little bit of a break from doing this work. And what we're finding is that a lot of the NDSU germplasm still has uh, superior pre-harvest sprout resistance when you compare it with other varieties in the marketplace but we can't lose that edge. And so we're developing new ways and we've got a student project. Um, Haley Visto is working on comparing different methods ranging from the genomic predictions 
uh, through different ways of actually screening the seed and screening heads that we harvest from the field to ensure that uh, we have the best pre-harvest sprout resistance that we can get. Another unfortunate condition from last year that spawned some new research, this is in collaboration with Drs. Liu and Friskop from Plant Pathology. Uh, we're really looking hard at screening and directly breeding for bacterial leaf streak resistance. So there's a field project on campus here where we're looking at inoculated uh, nurseries. So we're introducing the bacteria and we're rating those at regular intervals throughout the growing season to be able to have data to provide for the variety trial and uniform nurseries, but also to be able to make breeding decisions in a controlled environment for this disease. This is a very tricky pathogen because um, typically it's very difficult to control. And in opportunities before where we've gotten good data from disease expression, um, it's been through luck or through unfortunate circumstances, you might say. And so what we can do by having this controlled environment on campus is to have a way to manipulate things to prevent uh, some confounding issues like maturity date and uh, the environmental impact of uh, different uh, things like humidity and uh, thunderstorm activity and, and possibly leaf damage from hail and other things and really get a good pure look at the just this foliar leaf disease, which um, you know, we've discovered is, is probably robbing a lot more yield than most of us have given it credit for for a long time. So I see this being a priority disease and we're doing a lot of the hard work to screen the material, uh, both from the varieties and the breeding uh, standpoints. And I hope to have more information to share with you during the winter meeting season this year about how those experiments go. So the last thing I'll mention is by now, some of you have probably heard about the new wheat variety that's being released. Uh, we've named it ND Froberg. This is a variety that will be available to seed growers next year. We've actually done something different with this variety. We've got it out in a number of locations across the state um, in larger on-farm trials. These are seed producers who are testing out large blocks. Um, these are, are anywhere from uh, test strips all the way up to 80 acre blocks of this new variety. And we're collecting feedback and trying to determine where the best adaptation for this variety is so that the marketing folks can have the best information possible when it's released. So here's the story on ND Froberg. This is a line that has very high end use quality. It's been most similar to Glen, uh, which is, as most of you know, is, is the quality standard for spring wheats. Um, but with higher yields and better disease resistance. So Froberg has um, good fusarium resistance. It has uh, improved rust resistance compared to Glen. The bacterial leaf streak uh, is better than most varieties that are out. Um, we would consider it moderately resistant to, to BLS and uh, a few more bushels of yield than we saw with Glen. So, you know, really corralling those end use traits of high protein and good milling and baking quality with high yield is difficult. And what we've seen in our testing is that the yields of Froberg are similar to what you would find in Barlow in the East and similar to SY Ingmar in the West. So in general, you would be looking at uh, around three to four bushels greater than what you saw with Glenn uh, with straw strength that's similar to, to Glen, a similar plant stature. Um, it's not gonna, it's not very likely to be uh, heavily lodging wheat like you saw with Barlow or Faller or Elgin ND, um, sort of back to a, a stiffer straw, not quite as good as ND Vitpro, um, but not one that's, that we've seen in testing uh, that just goes completely flat. So improved lodging, uh, improved disease resistance over Glen with similar quality and a couple more bushels of yield. Uh, and we'll have more data for this to, to talk about from these larger on-farm trials as we get out of this year's field season and we uh, have it 
as a name variety in our variety trials and demonstration strips. So if you have a chance to visit a site that's got um, demonstration plots or a statewide variety trial at an REC near you, um, you can ask to see the ND Froberg and get a better look at it. And hopefully with these on-farm trials and larger demonstrations in the year before the seed distribution happens, it'll also allow your county agents to have a better look and impression of what this variety will do in your area so that when that first year distribution happens, um, it's not as much of a mystery. So that's kind of the goal with, with the, the model we're working with. We've been working very closely with NDSU Foundation seed stocks to, to get these larger distributions out and produce enough seed in advance of the formal release to be able to get some of this larger scale testing done. So those are some of the things that are interesting in the breeding program. Um, if you've got questions about anything that we're doing or comments or feedback, uh, look me up, send me an email, give me a call. My information is on the NDSU Plant Sciences website. I'd be happy to visit with you. Thank you.